For someone who posts weekly career advice out on the internet and YouTube, you would think that I could pass all of the interviews that I ever have to do. But unfortunately, I got rejected at the very first round of the interviews and I thought I should share my experience with all of you so you can learn from my mistakes and learn exactly what not to do and what types of pitfalls to avoid because these types of mistakes can happen to even the most experienced interviewers. So right off the bat, I always recommend to everybody, even if you're not thinking about leaving your current job, that you should interview at least once a year. And this is for two main reasons. So the first reason is that because you want to make sure you're practicing and utilizing your interviewing skills because you don't ever want to get rusty because let's say you get a really fantastic opportunity through LinkedIn or maybe your former manager wants to recruit you to their hot and sexy new startup that's going to IPO. You're going to want to make sure that you're feeling confident and prepared for these interviews with your interviewing skills. And the second reason why you should interview once a year is just so you can see what your value is out on the marketplace today. Not that you even have to leave your company, but it is good to see what types of roles you could get, which companies are interested in hiring you, how relevant your skills and experiences are in today's market, and it's also good to see what you could potentially get paid if you were to leave your company. All of this is going to be really helpful information just for you to think about as you progress through your career. All right, so how did this whole situation even start? Well, I wasn't looking for a job, I wasn't actively applying, but I got a very interesting message from the head of recruiting from a recently IPO company through my LinkedIn. And if you are looking for ways to increase your LinkedIn inbound leads or to optimize your LinkedIn so you can get more job opportunities, please check out this video that I've got right over here out on the channel. But this head of recruiting reached out to me and talked about a really potential and very interesting opportunity directly working for him on his team. So I responded to his message and we got on a quick informational call. Now this was very valuable because I got to speak directly to the hiring manager right off of the bat. And once he gave his little pitch and spiel about his company and what his team is looking for, I was very honest and frank with him and I told him that I wasn't really looking to leave my company. But if I was, I would only be interested in a role that would essentially be one level higher in responsibilities and scope than what I was doing now. Because I didn't really make sense for me to leave my current company because I really do like my job and I'm having a really big impact. Now, I just wanna say that this is very unusual and I don't think most companies in general would allow you to interview for a job that is one level above your initial or current responsibility. So I will say this is a very unique opportunity and circumstances. And this is what I would consider to still be a relatively small company, almost still in like a startup phase where they were willing to give me that type of opportunity to interview for a role that is technically one level higher. And I wouldn't say this is common, but I do think it is something folks should be thinking about. Now, this whole time I was thinking to myself that I never actually got to practice interviewing for the whole year yet. And so I thought this would be a really great opportunity for me to test my interviewing skills and see what my value is out on the market to see if I actually am qualified for a role that may be a little bit more senior than my current job title may portray. So, he was very nice and the hiring manager agreed to let me interview for this role and I gave myself one week to prepare and I think one week is a really good amount of time for folks to prepare for a brand new set of interviews because it's enough time where you feel that timing constraint so that you're motivated and you don't procrastinate but it's also long enough where you basically have seven days to prepare and practice all of your interviews and for a first round interview I do think you don't need any longer than a week to prepare to be totally honest just it's just going to be a pretty informal conversation and there's going to be a few behavioral and maybe some situational questions sprinkled in there and so it shouldn't be too difficult or so I thought now, if you are interested in seeing exactly how I specifically prepare for my interviews and what my interviewing cheat sheet looks like, make sure to drop a like or comment down below. And then if it gets enough traction, I will show you guys exactly how I prepare for my interviews. 
So in that one week that I took to prepare for these interviews, I basically was practicing my interview answers and my stories every single day. I was talking to folks who currently work at that company and used to work at that company to figure out what the interview process is like, what types of interview questions I can expect. And I also talked to my mentors in this space to figure out what potential interview questions I may be getting for this higher level role and if they honestly think that I am qualified for it. And most of them told me that because of the size of the company and what the scope of the work may be looking like, I may actually be qualified for this role if I'm able to really nail down these interviews. So now is the day of the interview and it's just a phone interview. I don't even have to turn on my video camera, which means I was even allowed to keep out some of my notes just for reference. And once the interview starts, he leads off with this really tough interview question. But I've been preparing and anticipating this exact question over the past seven days and I really shared a really powerful example about a time when I really stepped outside of my normal scope of responsibilities and I basically redesigned an entire leveling and evaluation criteria for my entire client's organization. And he even admitted that, that my answer was super impressive. I believe the words he used was, wow, I can't believe you actually did that all by yourself. And you've only been working in this role for three years. So right off the bat, I knew that I was doing a really good job and this interview was off to a really good start. He asked me another pretty complex question, which I also was prepared for, and I answered that one perfectly. And then that's where everything kind of went wrong. This interviewer asked me a super simple interview question that I honestly didn't prepare for because I was expecting these really complicated, complex, tough interviewing questions because I was interviewing for a job that was one level higher than what I'm supposed to be qualified for. And I didn't bother to prepare for anything super simple. And so he asked me this very simple and basic question about how to be a recruiter and I totally blanked. I basically gave a really bad answer that didn't really help me build my case for someone who is qualified for this role. And I didn't share anything that would help me stand out from other candidates. And I could tell based on his reaction and his tone of voice as soon as I said that, that he was very disappointed. And after that, he asked me a few basic questions and I really tried my best to kind of recover, but I could tell that my answer really landed flat and he wasn't interested in my questions or my answers really anymore. And towards the end of the interview, as most people do, they ask you if you have any questions for them. And so I asked my interviewer, you know, what does success look like in this role and what does someone what is the ideal candidate basically that you want to hire look like? And he went back to that question where I know I didn't give a very good answer. And he told me exactly what the answer is that he wanted to hear, which basically was not the answer that I gave. It's something that I actually do during my job, but I just didn't say it in the interview. And it was basically him hinting and telling me that I'm not a good fit. And just to make sure and to double check, um, I asked him, you know, I haven't been asked for my resume to apply for this position formally. Do you want a copy of it? And the interviewer was on the phone and he said, uh, actually, no, I don't really need a copy of your resume. And from that point, I basically knew that I was going to get rejected. And sure enough, two days later, I got an email from the original hiring manager that said, unfortunately, we are not going to be moving forward. So what are some key takeaways from my unfortunate rejection experience that you can learn and take away from this so you don't make the same mistakes as me? Well, the first is that in a general rule of thumb as, as me being a coach, I don't actually think people should interview and take a job just to make more money. If you're gonna be paid to do the exact same thing that you're doing at your current company, you're not getting additional responsibilities, you're not increasing your scope of work, you're not setting yourself up to be promoted for the next level, I honestly don't think you need to leave your company if it's just for a pay bump. Now, if you are super unhappy at your company or your manager's not treating you well or you feel like you're not being valued, then by all means, it's worth it. For you to take a similar role to get paid more, it makes a lot of sense. But if you're very happy at your current job, it 
I don't really think you should be leaving just for a pay bump. And that's why I communicated this to the hiring manager and I basically told him that the only reason I'd ever consider leaving is if I got the opportunity to interview at a higher level. Now, most companies may or may not allow you to do this, but it is something worth asking, especially if you know that this is going to be your practice interview for the year. Now, the second key takeaway that I think you can learn from this is in the preparation itself. Don't overcomplicate things too much. You should obviously do your homework like I did and figure out what types of questions are going to be asked, but you should also remember the basics. And this goes for even some of the executive or senior level folks who are watching this when you're applying for these higher level positions. You oftentimes will be asked some basic questions about certain skills or your experience. And you want to make sure that you have really good and solid examples for all of those questions as well. I made the classic mistake of overcomplicating things and assuming that I would only get very difficult interview questions and I wasn't prepared for something so simple. And because I wasn't able to answer a very simple interview question, I was clearly not a fit for this role. So how can you avoid this potential pitfall? Well, as you progress through your career, I think you should be documenting and logging all of the interview questions that you've gotten as you've been applying for different jobs, even from the beginning of your career. Now, if I had done this, what I would have known is that I should be practicing roles that I think are for this role that is potentially a higher level, but I also need to be practicing all of these questions that I've gotten in the past, just to make sure I have my basic basics down because you need to show them that you can do the basic fundamentals of your role before they would even consider promoting you or allowing you to take a role that is a higher level. All right, so I hope you found this valuable by me being a little vulnerable and admitting that even though I put out all these videos about interviewing tips, that I myself am not perfect and I also get rejected from job interviews. And I hope you can learn something from my mistakes. And why don't you comment down below if your last interview went well or not. And if it didn't go so well, what do you think went wrong? And I'll be sure to, to comment to everybody and see if there's anything that I can do to help you so that you can prepare for your next interview. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more career tips and I'll see you in the next video.